Our questions for this week's Sunday School class begin with uh, question number one. By the end of World War II on the Isle of Lewis, all the young people had drifted away from the church and no longer participated. In our day, it seems that young people are again drifting away. But what brought them back to the Isle of Lewis? What will it take to bring people back in our day and age? On the Isle of Lewis, the, the young people were convicted and brought back to the church in a miraculous way uh, through prayer. The people in the church, uh, old people, older people, younger people, all the people in the church were praying that God bring the people back. And I think that's what's going to take today. I mean, if this is this Sunday school lesson has really convicted me of our lack of prayer for our younger people. We complain about that the fact that they're not in church. We complain about all the things that they're involved in that take them away from church. We complain about people scheduling things during church. But our complaints outweigh our prayers by a long shot, at least mine have. And uh, so I believe that this has convicted me of a real need to pray for our young people, pray for people that aren't in church rather than complaining about the fact that they're not here. And so uh, I think if we could put together all the programs in the world uh, and those programs aren't going to be what the, the young people need. They need the power of God. They need to experience the power of God in, in a miraculous way. And so we need to be in prayer for people who are, have not experienced that and are longing for it. Question number two says, read 2 Chronicles 7.14 aloud. And 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people, who are called by my name, humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. I know we've all heard that scripture read or, or put before us before, but I think that's a powerful reminder. Uh, heal their land. God is saying to us, right here's the prescription. Right here's the way. You all asking for healing of your land. Based on the Isle of Lewis story, it seems as if God used the protracted, fervent prayers of two elderly women, a commitment to pray by the leaders of the church, and the repentance of one of the elders to open the doors to his tremendous work there. Cite other scriptural examples of times when God promised to do what only he could do if the people would meet his conditions. I think the whole Bible is full of those promises, and uh, it's full of of those promises fulfilled. And one of those promises fulfilled was that Jesus Christ came to bring salvation to all. And that's the power of God at work. And we saw as Jesus walked on this earth the power that God has to recreate, to change, to bring healing, to bring newness in a way that we can't even imagine. The disciples didn't imagine what Jesus brought. And we can't imagine what God has in store for us if we'll only humble ourselves and pray. And I think it's going to take more than me praying. It's uh, the leaders of the church. How, how much do the people of the church want God's presence here in this place? I think it's going to take us all coming together in prayer. So I think this is a, a great reminder to us. Where do we find healing? Where are we going to find healing for our church, for our community, for our land? In God. In prayer. And I think that's why it's so hard for us to pray is because the enemy knows that. But we have to persevere and overcome that. Our next question. In Alex's interview with one of the ladies from the Isle of Lewis, she says that the prayers offered during the revival were with a sense of expectancy in people's hearts. Is that how you pray? If not, how have life's disappointments dampened your expectancy and how can it be recaptured? Wow. I really had to think about that question. Do we have a sense of expectancy expecting God to bring our young people when we pray? To 
to bring other people, uh, to set people free of addiction? Do we expect that to happen? Or are we just kind of praying, thinking this is what we're supposed to do, but we don't really have an expectancy? Uh, have our disappointments that we've invited people and they haven't come, we've done this and we've done that, we've put together this program, we've done this at the church, and we've done all of these things and people haven't come, and we've just kind of gotten uh, so that we don't expect great things anymore. But I think this has really challenged me to think about my ex what, what do I expect when I pray? And how can we recapture that excitement that God is going to answer our prayers? This is and can happen. When we all together, so that it can't be put on me that this is something Cindy did or this is something that this person did or that person did, this is something that God did. And that's how we want this to come about. And so I think together we can change mighty things through the power of God when we humble ourselves and pray. Do you have a, the last part statement here is, do you have a vision of what God could do in your life, in your group, and your church if you were to draw closer to him? Using scripture and stories you've heard thus far in the series, what would that vision look like? Write some specific things to include in that vision. I challenge each of us to think about that. What would that vision look like in your own life? What would that vision look like in your small group? What would that vision look like for this church, for your church? Send me your visions. Send me your thoughts. I can't wait to read them. Thank you for participating in this and being challenged by it.